and this I think may be quite a long unboxing video. It could be so long it may be over two videos, I don't know yet. The reason for this is there is a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff in this box and I really want to show all of it. What it is, the one I've been waiting for. The Temple of Elemental Evil. There are other videos around here. But I like to do me own. box so as per usual one to five players let's uh, flip it over take the cellophane off and then we can see what's inside shall we as I said there's a lot of things in here and I want to go through this in quite a bit of detail because I don't think anyone else has and not the ones I've seen anyway it's just been a very quick gloss over unboxing I like to look at things in a little more detail sometimes so tight to get off. Now what do we have? Well first of all we have our instruction books which come in these nice little bags. Um, let's just open these up here. Let's see what's inside. We have oh, advertising bump for attack wing which can go to one side um, and then we have the rule book again it's not a massive book and uh, we have what is it 15 pages um, now this game is more of a campaign set up rather than just individual games but it can be played as individual games I would like to do this as a campaign, but we'll soon see what happens. And then we have our adventure book. And we have 12 adventures, 13 adventures. Again, the book length is 15 pages. And there we are. It tells you, it shows you how things are set up, what things are. And we even have a pre-made one. Um, for the first one and next we have uh, D&D Encounters Wonder Couch and Play it's store near you and that's a, basically a, a character sheet for D&D and then we have a thing for Neverwinter anybody who plays it there's the code I won't be playing it so if anyone can make use of it uh, feel free and then we have a sheet with our miniatures in it. Um, there we are. We're not going to look at this in any great detail um, because I want to show the, uh, the actual minis. Now we have. Where have I put my knife of opening? Over here. So let's just snip, snip. Let's just cut across the. Open up and you can see what's inside. Well, for the top sheet, we have <coughs> Sturtile, the big villain, some gold pieces, and the healing surges. On the other side, it's the town square. Again, the big monster. Now, this is the same for the two uh, both sided bots. This is the one to use for 
an ordinary one and this is the one we use for the village attack scenario. <coughs> Again we have a thousand gold pieces, a thousand gold pieces, I'll do exactly the same healing surges, about the same as we've seen before. So that's one whoops, one of the sheets. Next we have elemental water node and the elemental earth node. On the top there are two piece tiles and we have the village there. We have different villages along the edge. Uh, Amber, Borovic, Calabra and Rosilia. And then we have 900 gold pieces, 1000 gold pieces, 400 gold pieces and 500 gold pieces. I'm not sure what these do as yet. I think they're for buying things. Well, I may be wrong. And then we have the elemental fire node. We have the elemental ur node. We have more things here. A 600 gold piece for reroll, 700 gold piece for reroll, 800 gold piece for reroll, 900 gold piece for reroll, and more um, villagers, is it? Yes, more villagers. Uh, Eldon, Fodal. Gorstag and Hayen. <clears throat> Not a lot of tiles you may be thinking. Here we are. Well these do you. <laughs> right what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these back into the box. I'll put the box lid on. Oops. And I'll push the box over there and then we can have a proper look at these. And what we get in here is more of the dungeon tiles uh, we have hit points we have some more of those um, green purchase things we have the hit points I think we have more um, gold tokens disadvantage token that's new for this game and then we have the arrow trap tokens and the time tokens See, very similar to the um, older games. Slightly different design to the back of the uh, port tiles. This is much more greyer. If I remember rightly, the others were a bit more bluer. But same again on this one. We have another disadvantage tile, more tiles. Uh, 700 gold pieces plus one damage, 800 gold pieces plus one damage. Uh, more hit points, uh, 500 and 100 gold tokens, and there we are in the back, and much the same again. We have advantage this time rather than disadvantage, we have some more of those, more hit points, some more gold coin tokens, and more. Um, Plain tiles. And I think this is what we're going to be going through with all of these by the look of it. There's again advantage, some more of these type of things, some more hit points, five hit point token there, uh, gold coins, more traps, another time token, pool of all or hydra. We have a fire altar, we have a water altar, we have a massacre site, we have an oubliette, again a vantage token, some more of these, and your obligatory hit points and gold coins. 
And that's what the tokens are all about. We have an earth altar. More plain tiles. More and more. Blah de blah de blah de blah de blah. And advantage again. And then on this one we have more feature rooms. We have a furnace room. We have guard room. We have just a normal T junction. And we have an uh, altar. And then we have uh, advantage. And some of those green tokens. And on this one it's just cor corridor tiles. An disadvantage token or those green ones it's all much of a muchness with the tiles but now we get on to the interesting stuff we have one of the heroes, Nemestra we have one of the villains, the Ur Elemental we have another villain Shrugal Myrtle the Etting we have the Fire Elemental we have various conditions, stunned, disadvantage, we have more traps, we have elemental tokens, we have fleeing cultist, devastation orb and Mikazi. And on the back of them we have a level 2 hero, we have an earth elemental Akashic Thun, the Salamander, and we have the Water Elemental. And on here we have the other heroes. We have Burrowing, the Gold Dwarf Cleric. We have Aileros. We have Rat Shadow, the Halfling Thief, Halfling Rogue, sorry. And we have Talon, the Human Ranger. Uh, disadvantages and we have Rage of Imix tokens there and we have two tokens for a character called Ivy and again we have stunned tokens at the bottom and that is it for these this is a big chunk of hardboard there we are hey that was fun so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put these together and when we come back we'll be having a look at all the smaller stuff in the box. So uh, let's get down to the tabletop shall we? Okay so uh, we have two packs of cards. Uh, let's get these open. There's a way of opening these without the ah, There's a way of opening these without using It's always nice. Okay, so first of all, let's have a look. We have treasure cards. You know the treasure cards, we've seen these often enough. Especially over the last few videos I've done. They give you all sorts of nice things. Um, most of these are money. Uh, we also get various items as well. And I'm hoping that's not all of the treasure cards that we have. Um, time will tell. I'll put those there just to be on the safe side. And, and there now we have monster cards. Okay, so monster cards. The usual kind of thing. We have the name of the monster at the top. The type of monster it is, the armor class, the hit points, the monster's tactics, what happens when the monster makes a move, and then we have his attack and damage um, information there, and how much experience it's worth to us, and the number of the card in the bottom. Some of these um, you need to use certain number of cards or certain numbers, certain card numbers for certain missions. Um, so that's why they're there. So we have an Ur Elemental, we have an Ur Elemental, an Earth Elemental, an Empowered Earth Cultist, another Empowered Earth Cultist, 
another empowered earth cultist, an empowered earth cultist, another empowered earth cultist, three of each, empowered fire cultist, and an empowered water cultist. So, they must be separate because they're empowered. We're going to have a look at some of the other cards. We have encounter cards. These are the big nasties. These are the ones we don't want to turn over, but we must in some cases. <laughs> so we can appease ghosts. It tells you what it is at the top. Um, the title of it, a little bit of flavour text, and then it tells you the effect. And then it tells you whether you have to discard it or keep it or whatever. Um, I don't think any of these you really keep. I don't think there's a lot of the, that are ongoing, if any of them that are ongoing, but <coughs> there we are. And again, this is an event which you can get quite a lot of. Some of them okay, others really bad. And then we have an event attack. These have different things. These are, are red to show that they are really, really bad. And uh, hopefully there's going to be more of each of these cards, otherwise it's going to be a very short game. <laughs> and then we have adventure cards. I found more treasure cards. So these adventure cards, uh, for this one we have an ally. And uh, looks like each of these we have an ally, so uh, that's not too bad and we have some water as well so for the first um, ally we get it's Amber the blacksmith it says ally she's a hill dwarf uh, Amber class of 12 two hit points if Amber is on the start tile return the Amber token and card to the game box otherwise Amber, Amber moves one tile towards the start tile and it says here, if Amber is killed, return this card and the Amber token to the game box. And it's probably the same for all the others. These would be like if you have to rescue pe certain people from certain events. Um, these will be the ones that we have to uh, rescue. It doesn't actually say they have any form of attack in them, so... I don't think there will be, um, what you call it, uh, I don't think there'll be fighting allies, but you never know. And again we have treasure cards, and let's have a look at some of these, shall we? Um, we have adre Adrenaline Surge. Okay, so this one's a fortune, it's an adrenaline surge, um, it tells you to play immediately, so this is not something you can keep. Uh, it tells you what happens and then it tells you that you have to discard it after playing, which I think it does on all of them, unless it's some piece of equipment that can be kept. But uh, let's have a look at a few of these, shall we? Um, I'll just put them all together. I'm not going through these in any great detail, just have a look at a few of them. You can see what they are. Um, pouch of copper. All this can we can skim through because we've seen one of them. We have an exploding gem. This one you can use as a weapon. Sometimes you actually uh, you can you use it instead of an attack action, or you can use this one during your, your hero phase at any time. Again, during your any time during your hero phase. These healing potions. Then we have javelin of lightning, uh, which uh, is again another weapon you can use. Um, as per usual, some of these you can actually buy in between. Um, scenarios and there we are and next I think is just monsters so 
let's have a quick look through these what we have we have uh, a normal fire cultist another normal fire cultist and we have a null archer hobgoblin fighter troglodyte some of these you get a special ability that happens um, in this case a uh, stencher hero that begins his or her to hero phase adjacent to the troglodyte gains disadvantage because of the bad smell and uh, a water cultist we have now and this one when it actually doesn't attack it moves the hero tile away ok so I'll pop them there and then let's have a look at these there we are. I'm going to use these bags all the time. I think I might do what I did with the others and get some cards. Um, what do we call it? Uh, deck holders, card hold, uh, card cases, card boxes. I'll get this right eventually. Duh. <laughs> right, so uh, we have the sequence of play card. Now let's so we compare the sequence of play that we get here with the sequence of play that we get um, from the original three games oh, the top part is exactly the same, the hero phase is slightly different uh, step two, in the original it's perform one of the following actions, you can move then make an attack, attack and then move or make two moves with this one however um, you can move, attack, disable a trap and or other so you can move and do another move, you can move and then attack, you can move and then disable a trap, or you can move and then other, or you can move and then move again, attack and then move again, disable a trap, move again, that, yeah. Uh, other cards may give you additional uses for your um, actions. And then when we turn it over, it looks as if it's exactly, the, well, new enough exactly the same. Um, if your hero occupies a square adjacent to an unexplored edge, see page 5, go to step 2, otherwise go to the villain phase. It looks exactly, exactly the same. It's just styled different on these ones as they were on the originals. But, uh, yeah, they are, they are the same kind of thing. And now we have more monster cards. Let's have a look at these. I don't know if there's some reason why these have been separated, but we have an occultist. We have a bugbear. We have a doppelganger. And the special ability on this one uh, when the doppelganger is drawn place your hero on the start tile and place the doppelganger in the square your hero previously occupied hmm interesting one two three of those and then we have the earth cultist I'm trying to get everything on that you really, really need to know about these uh, the only thing I'm not really showing is the experience. I'll try and give you an idea of what the cards look like. One thing I really don't want to do is go through the scenarios and spoil anything for you. Uh, there you go, monster cards. And then we have more encounter cards. Attack from the shadows each hero on a tile with no other hero takes two damage. Not good to be alone. Very bad on a solo game, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, I'm just going to whisk through a few of these, then you can see the kind of things that we're going to be up against. Um, 
and going these uh, events. There's a few attacks as well in there. But there we are. The, they are the event cards. Now we are looking at our character card. So we have a wizard. Nice purple background for the wizard. These are her power cards. We have the at will cards. Again, I'm not going to go through these in any detail. I'll just pause for a, a, a second, just so you can hopefully um, pause and have a read at your leisure. Next we have our Ranger. character talent the archer in a campaign with um, or in a game with uh, Catibri having them stand to the back and uh, just shoot things might be a fun game oh, no. oh, just might be fun <laughs> and then we have our fighter the barbarian character
photo out of the way. And now all that's left is our cleric, or is a dwarf. And here we have four cards for them. Not four cards for her, sorry. It'd be interesting to have a game with an all dwarf. Um, contingent. I hope we're doing the uh, our castle raid and loft after him uh, camp, mini campaign. We're using all humans. I think I might do Wrath of the Sherdalon uh, in a bit with uh, all dwarves. Might be interesting. Might not be. You never know. <laughs> Do Legend of Drist with uh, a complete elven cast, whether it be wood elves or whatever, and drow. Um, who knows? I'm going to have to use Drist. I'm going to have to use Drist if I'm going to play that. <laughs> it's going to have to be. So it might be a mix of the different elves, but yeah. Uh, There we go. So that's the cards. That's the tiles. But we also have bags and bags and bags and bags of miniatures, which we are going to be going through right now. So I'll just move the cards that we've been looking at out of the way. 